On occasion when we're out talking to members, we get the question whether we're accurately comparing old and new genetics. And a lot of times this has to do with the fact that we have a cow that comes in and ratios well for her weaning weight progeny records. For instance, one of the comments we hear from members a lot of times is that my cow, who was born several years ago, has a weaning weight ratio of 3 at 108. But really, what does this 3 at 108 wean ratio really mean? And I think that's how we get into this conversation about divulging whether or not we're comparing and accurately comparing the old and new genetics precisely enough in our genetic evaluation. So when we talk about the National Cattle Evaluation, really what we're trying to do is we're trying to leverage all of the data points that are sent in by you all as members. So the first thing we're gonna look at are the pedigree ties amongst our animals in individual contemporary groups within a herd, but also how those contemporary groups are tied to other herds across the country. This allows us to make genetic connections or genetic ties to these individual animals. And one of the reasons Angus is so well equipped to do this is because of our early use and adoption of artificial insemination in our industry. These high use AI sires allow us to connect the pedigree from coast to coast and from north to south when we're talking about using different bulls in different contemporary groups within different environments. This allows our genetic evaluation to be very strong when trying to find the true genetic potential of these individual genetic lines. The next item that we use are the individual performance records. And these individual performance records are gonna be the individual birth, weaning, yearling, heifer pregnancy, scrotal circumference measures, ultrasound scan records that you all as members are sending into the association. The one thing to be aware of is how heritability or how much of an individual trait is controlled by genetics versus the environment. Heritability comes into play when we're talking about individual weight records or individual observations, performance data points you're sending in on your individual animals. Lower heritability trait measures like maternal milk, reproductive traits like heifer pregnancy, have less of an impact on the movement of that EPD because each record is less heritable and more influenced by the environment, which in turn doesn't have the influence on the EPD as a highly heritable trait such as mature height or carcass characteristics. So within the genetic evaluation, we obviously start with your performance record or your phenotype on your individual animal. And what we're doing as geneticists and what we're doing with your data in-house is basically parsing apart the genetics and the environmental piece of that performance data point. So when we talk about the genetic piece, we basically have the additive genetic variance and our non-additive additive genetic variance proportions. And what we're talking about with the additive genetic variance is we're talking about that heritable portion that gets passed down from generation to generation. The non-additive genetic variances are gonna be those variances due to things like crossbreeding. When we talk about the environmental piece of performance, we're talking about the things that we know and the things that we can explain that basically control a proportion of that performance within the contemporary group. Think of your contemporary grouping criteria. We know that our age of dam, for instance, has an influence on how heavy that calf is gonna be at birth and weaning. We understand that when we wean that calf is gonna have an effect on how heavy that calf is when we take them off and, and wean them off that cow. We not only have to consider the low heritability estimate of the maternal milk EPD when considering a cow's individual weaning progeny record, we also have to take into account something that we call repeated measures and the fact that cows have a permanent environmental effect built into that repeatability of that trait. As we gain more and more progeny records on an individual dam, because of this repeated nature of this trait and because of the permanent environmental effect that is included in that repeatability, the incremental accuracy increase included with each additional progeny phenotype actually starts to level off in a nonlinear curve formation as we continue to add those weaning weight progeny records. Therefore, the value of each individual weaning progeny actually starts to deplete over time in terms of increasing the accuracy of that milk EPD. In order to take a look if we're accurately assessing the differences between old and new genetics, the first thing we want to look at are the genetic trends across the population. If we're inaccurately assessing the genetic merit between these two groups, Basically, what we would see in our genetic trends is an inflation in recent years in our genetic trends for things like weaning weight EPD and milk EPD, and a deflation in the animals in the past few decades. 
When we analyze these trends though, we can map year over year our genetic trends through our SIRE evaluation report, and we can see that these genetic trends line up one on top of the other. Based on this assessment of genetic trends year over year, this supports that the American Angus Association's genetic evaluation is not penalizing older genetics when they are compared with the newer genetics of the time. After looking over the genetic trends, the AGI team wanted to take it one step further and actually find contemporary groups that had been supported since 2017 and compare the new and old genetics head to head. First, we looked at if this was possible and we found several sires, both that were young and sires that were 20 plus years old and found that they were still reporting 100 plus progeny into our genetic evaluation. From there, we had to take it one step further and find individual contemporary groups where the calves were managed the same, measured on the same date, and treated in the similar manner so that we could truly compare these genetics head to head. When diving into this case study, we found 787 different contemporary groups where the mean genetic age difference between new and old genetics were 20 plus years. When we compared the dam's total maternal value, the new genetics had a 21.7 pound advantage over the old genetics within those contemporary groups. When we actually put the calf adjusted weaning weights head to head, the actual difference in pounds of calf were 17.8 pounds on average with the advantage to the new genetics in those different contemporary groups. This again supports that the association is doing a good job of assessing the differences between the new and old genetics when those genetics are compared head to head in the same contemporary groups. It's important to keep in mind as a producer that the variation that we see in an individual performance trait isn't all genetic. If all of our traits had a heritability of one, we would be able to make fast genetic progress and all the variation that we were experiencing in that individual performance trait would be due to genetics. Unfortunately, we have this big E or environmental component that really plays a huge role in many of our individual traits that we're measuring. Due to the great management decisions made by you as individual producers, your cows are given ample opportunities to be successful, especially when we're talking about raising and weaning a healthy calf. So it's important to keep in mind that when we're reporting that individual information, even though two cows may ratio the same, doesn't mean they have the same genetic potential when we're starting to talk about comparing them across genetic lines, across different contemporary groups, and within the entire genetic evaluation system.